Hey, everybody, this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey is brought to you by our title sponsor, NHL Sense Arena. Look, we all want our kids to succeed in hockey, but let's face it, finding training that's both effective and enjoyable can be a real challenge, and not to mention expensive and a total drain on time, especially if you have to drive to the rink, uh, pay a, a private instructor. There's so many reasons that uh, money gets spent on this game. But that's where NHL Sense Arena steps in. It's a virtual reality training game that brings the rink into your home that takes off-ice training to a new reality. It's designed to improve hockey sense and IQ, something that's lacking majorly in the game today for both players and goalies. And you get unlimited access to over 100 drills and training plans from top coaches and players that can be played anytime, anywhere with drills approved by USA Hockey player and goalie development directors. Look, improving mental hockey skills at home has really never been more fun and any hockey player that uses this is going to have a blast, all right? I've used this before on my own, and it feels like you're so immersed in an arena, you sometimes forget you have a headset on. And again, it's not being on the ice, but it allows you to work on some of these skill sets like scanning, as I said before, hockey IQ, looking around the rink, making the right plays, that getting those repetitions in now as a hockey player are super important for your development. So NHL Sense Arena is giving all the listeners an exclusive offer for $50 off an annual plan when you use our code Hockey Never Stops at checkout. Again, that's Hockey Never Stops. All you got to do is go to hockey.sensearena.com. Uh, Again, that's hockey.sensearena.com. Use the code Hockey Never Stops, and you'll save $50 on your an annual plan of NHL Sense Arena. Make sure to check that out and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. <laughs> Hey, everybody. I'm going to keep this intro super brief this week because I have a really nice intro to the show today. But we have Brian Santoro on. He was my instructor at the USA Hockey Goaltending Bronze Course. So he's going to drop a lot of gems today for not just goaltenders, but coaches, parents, players, everyone that plays ice hockey about how to incorporate this position into your practices and the importance of developing this position. Uh, also explain to you why you might want to look into getting that bronze certification, uh, if not more, in the USA Hockey Goaltending Course. Uh, also, if your kids have equipment that you need to dry you know where i'm going with this go pick them up a dry stick at hockeywraparound.com again the dry stick is a portable drying rack that attaches right to your stick where you can take it on tournaments you can take it on the road you can put it in a garage it will save space and you can hang up all of your gear including goaltending gear on the dry stick so again go over to hockeywraparound.com use our discount code okph at checkout you'll get a nice discount you'll get a dry stick you can pick up a wraparound if you want while you're there and you help support the sponsor of the show but without further ado, let's get you into the show with Brian Santora of Our Kids Play Goalie. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another episode of Our Kids Play Goalie. You know, just over a month ago before recording this, I had the privilege to be a student once again at the USA Hockey Bronze Goaltending Coach Course, and it was an interesting experience for me as I was surrounded by other goalies and goalie coaches, and I was just one of maybe two or three non-goalies in the room and with that said I learned a lot about the position and more importantly walked away with some tools I could use within my own practices and approach to the game something we created this show exactly to do so today I'm happy to bring you two things from that course one for those of you watching this prestigious bronze level badge that I earned this bronze level badge I've showed it to everybody said I am a goalie coach I haven't done that actually I'm very shy about saying I'm a goalie coach because there are people far more qualified than me but I did get the badge and two, more importantly, I asked my instructor, Brian Santora, to join us for this episode, which he graciously accepted. Brian was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and has been playing goalie since four years old. That's something we're going to jump into in just a moment. He became a tier one goalie in the area before playing juniors in Surrey, British Columbia, which led to him playing college hockey and minor league hockey. Like most of us listening, when Brian became a parent, his life changed and he turned to the world of coaching. Brian served as the assistant hockey director at the Flyers Training Center and founded the Spartan Goaltending Academy in 2019. It was also in that year he got involved with the USA Hockey programs to coach coaches, parents, players, admin, everything, anything in between. We've got a lot to unpack on this one. Brian, welcome to Our Kids Play Goalie. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, the yeah. pleasure's all ours. So let, let's start with this one. I teased it in the open. You started playing goalie at four which it, 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 by today's standards, that wouldn't even happen. Did, were you voluntold to go in that? Did you volunteer to go in that? How did you end up in the net at four years old? 
So uh, I never wanted to be a goaltender. Uh, <laughs> my grandfather was a goalie, and uh, I couldn't stand just watching him. When I would go and watch his games, I'm like, I'm never going to do that. I'm never just going to stand there. And my grandfather was an old-fashioned stand-up goalie, you know, leather pads, the face mask, the whole nine yards. Um, and it, so I started at Rizzo Rink, uh, which is a small three-quarter ice sheet uh, in South Philadelphia. And uh, my first game, I was all set to go out and be this, you know, defenseman that I was going to just throw people around and, and defend the goalie. And um, I heard that our goalie wasn't going to show up. And the coach walks over to my grandfather and it sunk in very quickly <laughs> that they were going to tell me to go put the house pads on. And I cried the entire game. And, but most like most Adam division games back in those days, uh, the game ended in a one nothing win for us because the kids, it was just a cloud of children chasing a puck around the ice. And I had one shot on net and I made that save and I got my first shot out and I was hooked because it was the coolest feeling in the world. Cause everybody jumped on me after the game and the coaches were yelling. So from that point on, I was just, uh, I was, I was a, uh, I was addicted to this, to the position. Yeah, Brian, I can tell you this. I, I don't believe I have any memories from that age. So this was like a core memory for you. This started you on a path at four years old. Uh, it's funny. I, I shared this that I remember when my, my son is obviously a goalie. We've talked about this on the show many times uh, for those of you listening. But it was the same experience. He kind of got a shutout in his first game. And I remember I, I've joked with Mike. I went, oh, no, <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be a thing. And and I'll tell you what, he has fallen in love with it. He really loves it. He's actually at a goaltending camp as we're recording this. So so that's that's where my life is at. And um, I was excited to bring you on again because uh, when I attended the course, there was a real uh, you know push towards this isn't just for goalies, right? And that goaltending education is lacking across the board in, in youth hockey. It's not just the coaches aren't there. It's all coaches need to know more about this. And, uh, and Mike, this question is kind of almost for you too, Mike, but I want you both to answer. I want to talk about the, the USA Hockey goaltending courses, why they were created. Um, and I want to hear both your thoughts, you know, why this education is important for all coaches, not just goalie coaches. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Brian's obviously, you know, right in the thick of it right now. And, and with this, uh, you know, I, I think I don't even want to say this new philosophy, but just a, a reinvigorating uh, and a reinventing of the, of the goalie educational program. You know has really come i think forefront to to everybody you know around the world right so i think when when i started uh with the bronze and and the coaching education program i mean we we actually we we're out in long island and like you had guys like tony louisi and and uh dave starman and, and mike mcmillan these guys and one of the things that happened was when you went to the the american development model and we went to these small area games and these you know uh station-based practices all of a sudden all these hockey coaches are like well what am i supposed to do with my goalies like there's six stations out here. I just got the kid sitting in the net, right? He's just, he's just there. And I think that really spurred the, the need to say, well, this is what a great opportunity we have to, to specifically work with goaltenders. And since, you know, everybody can't have a goalie coach, you know, most programs, we have to make our coaches goalie coaches and understand the position and understand that, you know, uh, quality over quantity is not the goal here. And I think a lot of that, a lot of that really, you know, came from the American development model. It came from the fact that we were in a, in an environment where we wanted to get a lot of quality reps and then you need to teach the people that were working with those athletes, whatever position they were to make sure that the quality reps um, had a lot of structural pieces in there that were correct. And I think goaltending more than any other position, um, the structural piece is so important. Right. Um, you, you know, you know, obviously you want your goaltenders to be who they are, but there's a lot of structural pieces in goaltending that, you know, you don't, you don't worry as much about from a forward or, uh, you know, a skater position, but, you know, Brian's, you know, Brian, I just like to hear, you know, more, you know, where that the last couple of years, and especially, you know, you, I'm sure you went through the, 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 most of the online time, right. And the, and the, and the, the fact that you have to teach for teaching goaltending, um, just virtually, Right. You don't, you don't even have a chance to like grab somebody and be like, hey, this is an angle. You know, it's how we work on our angles. And this is the visualization. And this like it's such it's such a I think it actually helped us um, fine tune the messaging and and make it clearer for people uh, because you just couldn't put somebody in the net and say, here's two pipes. And here's where you have to align yourself with the, you know, with the rest of the rink. So 
I will tell you, I was, I, I came from the age of uh, just get in the net and get shot at and you'll get better. Um, and I didn't receive like quality goaltending coaching as like a part of my season until I played in juniors until I got to Surrey. Um, I, I, I didn't have goalie coaching. It was, it was a, you know, I was, like I said, my grandfather was a goalie, so I got tips from him, but they were very old school stand up style. When I got the chance, uh, I, I was brought into the fold by Alex Pachusek, which is now he's the goalie uh, coach in chief for um, the Atlantic district. And I saw what they were trying to do. And I, I was, I was like, I'm in, if, if I can help in any way to bridge that gap between the head coach or assistant coach and the goalies so that they're not just, Hey, just get in the net. You know, it's, it's not a thousand reps of the same shots with no instruction. It, it doesn't help a goalie, you know, um, goalies are at an advantage right now because there is so much information online more so than was ever available before uh, for these kids to learn. But we want to try and distill that down so that the coaches can tailor their practices to benefit the goalies. And yes, the ADM absolutely uh, revolutionized the way that we're doing practices now in hockey. And it's, we kind of, we took that and we wanted to add a, you know, almost like a, a sublet or a sub, you know, subset practice inside of the regular practice where we teach the coaches, Hey, listen, you can design a, a drill, however you want to design it, but this is how you incorporate the goalie and give him feedback and make sure that, you know, he's getting quality practice time too. It's not just, you know, you have a three shot drill to warm everybody up and the goalie's getting inundated with six or seven shots before he can even reset. We've now told, told coaches, you need to pull back and have your assistants kind of time the kids as they're going, not just let them just keep running, you know, rough shot over the goaltenders. It's been a real great experience working with Steve and the rest of the USA hockey and seeing how much um, kind of on a pedestal they're putting the goaltending position right now. I'm not trying to center us and make us more important than anybody else, but, you know, giving that, I guess, credence to the position. Um, you know, it's not just, oh, I have this star, you know, two forward lines and, or I've got the most defensive team in hockey. It's I have a well-rounded team that's an offensive threat. You know, they're solid defensively. They know where to go. They know how to outlet. And my goaltender is well-trained and we take care of him in practice. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, the the how far we've come since I took my first bronze course is leaps and bounds because again like I said uh, earlier the the goaltending coaching class was originally like you know when I when I took it it was more kind of geared towards goalie coaches or or parents that were getting involved with teams that wanted to be goalie coaches and help out um, and now it's we want everybody to take the course I want head coaches there assistant coaches there you know uh, you know. Men and women that are involved in this game that are that are teaching these kids, um, you know, and I want them to be able to, if they're by themselves, to still be able to help their goalies out and still be able to, you know, disseminate good information for them. Yeah, I, I think one of the things we've seen, you know, from this our kids play goalie section is we so many goaltenders that start getting involved in teaching because of the need of the the non goaltending coach saying well yeah yeah it's it's that's how i grew up i, I you, you know you just get in the net make saves like i used to joke around uh, you know with the, my college kids like we have three goalies my job isn't my my job is to find you three your job is to be the best goalie like i'm not worrying about you know figure out who's gonna win uh, you know the battle of the three i gave you three people let's see who the best one is instead of teaching and moving those players up i think what we've seen now at the youth level and 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 you know you made a great point brian was that that piece of knowing that we have to do more for our kids in the net because I'm the coach of all the kids. I'm not just the coach of the forwards or I'm not just the defensive coach. I'm coaching all of the kids. Now, if we're fortunate enough to have practices at the youth level where we have a defensive coach, an offensive coach, a goalie coach, a, a manager, great. But even in that case, right, you watch it every single level of the game, the goalies have to be thought of when you're building out your practice plan because you need to make sure that they're getting, you know, we, we joke around in, in these episodes all the time that if you want players to stop pucks, track pucks, freeze pucks, and stop a play, well, you have to allow that to happen every day in practice. If you're just asking players to stop a puck and then run and jump to the other side of the net, those reps are, are actually very negative reps. 
And I think what the bronze, you know, clinic has done and all these goalie clinics has done is open the eyes for coaches to understand that maybe not the position so much, but the importance of timing, mm -hmm. the importance of quality, the importance of mimicking the game so that we can prepare our, our goalies. Like I, I, you know, when I talk to offensive coaches, right. And they're talking about my kids, can't, my kids don't know how to score. Like they don't know how to get rebounds. Like, well, every drill you've done for 20 weeks is shoot and loop, shoot and loop, shoot and loop. So if you're all your players and practices, shoot the puck and then go to the corner and go to the line. That's what your game looks like. And I think what the, what USA hockey has done and in your, in, in the courses that, that, that guys like you are running what that's done is open the eyes to coaches to say, wow, if I want my goalies to be quality players in the net and I got to give them quality reps. And that's, I think one of the, like, I don't need to know the logistics of, uh, you know, different plays from a goaltender as a, as a, as a main coach, I just need to know how right. to put that player in the position to then to your point, be able to take all these learning points that they're getting from either a goalie coach clinics, camps, YouTube, you know, Instagram, and, and allow them then to figure out, you know, how can they be the best goalie as long as I give them the chance to stop pucks in a, in a game like scenario. Yep. Yeah, the I agree more. It's, it, yeah, go ahead, Brian. I apologize. No, no, no. It's, I, I just, I'm just agreeing. Uh, Mike, it's, it's, it's refreshing to hear coaches talk like that and it's becoming more commonplace. There are still a few old, you know, old fashioned holdouts in the coaching world where it's, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to coach my goalie. One of my assistants can do that. I just designed the plays and I need them to make stops. And, and, and in all honesty, eventually those dinosaurs will go to the wayside and, you know, we'll have completed the turnaround into a newer age of youth hockey where, you know, everybody gets development equally. And, and you know, I, I get it. You're not everybody, and Mike, you're absolutely right. Not everybody is going to be an in-depth goalie coach and be able to counsel their goalie. Hey, man, you should have made a power slide across the crease and, you know, come back to your post, you know, versus, you know, hey, you might, it's a little observation. Hey, our defensemen are boxing that guy out. I need you to come out a little bit further from the crease. I don't, I don't I'm not going to tell you what kind of save to make, but you're playing a little conservative. How about, you know, helping our defensemen out and putting that in the corner or freezing the play for us. This is what I want you to do in this instance. If we're really dying on the penalty kill, I need you to make a freeze somewhere, you know, but just having that little bit of understanding and then being able to curtail your practices in those real game situations is, is critical. Yeah. I can talk to that. You know, one of my biggest takeaways from the course, Brian was uh, it doesn't take much on a coach's end to kind of have a clue. I, I wanted to leave that course with a clue, right? So again, never really played goalie in my life. Um, I've, I've gone to goaltending clinics when I was a, a younger player because I wanted to learn how to score, believe it or not. Um, so I've seen goalie camps, but I, I would never say like, I know the position. In fact, jokingly, um, someone asked me, someone knew I took that course and they came up to me and said, are you a goaltending coach? And I was like, no. And like, but no, you, but you are. I was like, okay, yes, I took a course, but I, I'm, I'm still not comfortable being called that. You know what I mean? Like, like I just, yeah. I just wanted to have a clue. And the biggest takeaway from the course was, you know, especially from that on ice session, um, one, Mike, to your credit, not not just how easy the quick change gear was, which is a no brainer if you're in a youth organization at that level, but the the thought process of, okay, okay look, you have an hour, 15 minutes, goalie needs 15 minutes to do this type of stuff. You should take them aside for 15 minutes if possible, let them do this training on the drills, make sure that there's an understanding of the position of how it's worked into your drills. And like, also little things like you said, Mike earlier, Brian, you said this too at, at the clinic, you know, not shot, 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 like let them reset, let them figure things out, let them understand that. And then other methodologies of just adding things to the drill. Like uh, again, all the goalies listening are going to roll their eyes, but like, this is something I didn't know of just like having a phantom shot by putting a stick down and making the, the goalie know, okay, there's, there's pretend a shots coming from here and then get up and how valuable that little element is to making a goalie more comfortable. Now, the other thing I'm going to say is, is this, and, and as a coach for 20 years, I've never understood anybody, not just coaches that does not take time to focus on that position. Maybe it's because I grew up in Philadelphia and we had a goaltending carousel for my entire life uh, in the NHL, or, or maybe it's just because having played, I just have a clue of how important that position is, but if you're not taking a moment to have a clue about that position as a coach, you're really letting the whole team down, in my opinion. 
right? It is the most important position on the ice by far, right? The only player who plays the whole game typically, right? And it's like, it's just, it does not take much to incorporate some thought into your drills, into your communication. We'll get into that in a few minutes, Brian, of how you can communicate with your your goalies. And then, and then just the work that they need to do, right? Like, like, again, I think one of the things we talked about at that course was just, Hey, if you have the means, give 15 minutes to that goalie and a coach to just work on some things. And, you know, and I've, I've heard, I can hear coaches, well, I, well, my players need shots. Your goalie needs work. <laughs> you know, it's like, you, what, the, they can shoot. You have shooter tutors. We have everything we need nowadays for a player to, to figure out how to shoot on the net. Um, so that, that was my big takeaway. And I'm going to say it. I left this course having probably more than just a clue about the position. Um, other things too, it, I think, and this is where I think it's tough for you, Brian. I'd love your thoughts on this. I'm sitting in the room surrounded by goalies and you have to go through the equipment, right? And it's like, look, I can see the goalies in the room like, well, okay, look, I know the equipment. But for me, obviously I know the equipment, but I didn't know it like you had taught it. I didn't know the importance of certain things. And, and slowly but surely, some of these goalies did start asking questions of, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? So it is so important from, from a coaching standpoint, if you have the ability to take this course, it's not long. It's not even half a day, right? It, it's great information. You'll have a clue. The, the, it, I thought it was engaging in terms of the conversations that we had, right? And I think it's also good that I was surrounded by goalies because I'm, I was listening to them on the ice too, right? I like listening to them. Like, well, if you do this and you do that, what, one, of, one of them came up to me on a drill and I'll throw it back to you. It's like, what do you think the goalie's doing wrong in this drill? I was like, I don't know what the hell he's doing wrong. I'm trying to figure that out right from you. <laughs> and then And then they explained it to me. I was like, I never thought about that. So- uh, again, that was long-winded, but my point is it's so important to have a clue as a coach. It does not take much on our part as coaches to incorporate effective goaltending training into every single practice. Probably just should have started with that. It would have saved us all a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I sometimes come across as a little condescending as a goalie and as a goalie coach, but four head coaches that I've butted heads with, it, it like – it, don't, it makes me laugh sometimes how clueless some of the old school coaches can be. And even some of the newer coaches, like, you know, you get, you're not always going to have a guy that played high level hockey. That's going to be coaching your kids. You're not always going to have somebody who's a professional coach. You know, it, you're going to get a dad that's in there. Like I play men's league. Uh, I'll coach the kids. I can be there every week. I can be there on the weekends. Um, it, it literally takes you an hour to go online and learn even a basic understanding of goaltending. If you've never touched a pair of pads in your life, if you've never watched a video, you know, I, I, it takes zero effort to go onto YouTube and go down a rabbit hole for an hour. Right. You know, there's so much information. I tell my kids that I coach this all the time. There's no reason why you shouldn't know every last bit of history and, and have a grasp of the understanding uh, of, of how this position works uh, by just going on your phone and, ticking around on the internet so it, it's nothing for a coach to go on and just kind of absorb some of that information and admittedly at the at the the class i i told you guys i'm the biggest goalie nerd that there is you really I, are. <laughs> I i i love equipment i love like tips and tricks i love drills i, I my phone is a buffet of goaltending everything you know and I, I admittedly sometimes my kid gets a little tired of it because like He's just exposed to it all the time. And and he makes fun of me because I get so excited. We'll go to the, the hockey store and I'll see a new set of pads and I'll start, you know, pulling it apart and looking at it. And, and you know, I hear him roll his, or, you know, I hear him rolls his <laughs> eye and he goes, all right, here goes dad. I'm going to go somewhere else in the store, dad. You have fun. <laughs> well, I yeah, but I think in that, in, that, in, that same, in that same breath, right, that you, we have to be aware that if you're a goalie parent, you're you're coming into it assuming the head coach is a professional like you're like oh this guy's coaching my team he's the coach i mean so so it it behooves you as that coach whether you're a goalie coach or not to be the most knowledgeable coach you can be i mean it doesn't make sense to me that you wouldn't you would just dismiss a very important position on your team and say hey listen we're I, I, like even even me like at the youth hockey level like, i hate when programs give uh, like goalies, like free goaltender or half goaltending price. Oh, you're a goaltender, you pay half. Well, you pay more. You play more than my kid does. You play every damn game. You're every practice. But in, instead of saying I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, charge you half of what it costs. Actually, you're gonna, you're gonna pay the full boat. But guess what we're doing? 
we're adding, we have knowledgeable people that are going to work with your kid every right. day. So you don't have to go out and get the 16 hours of, of, of training. Now, can that enhance what you do? But it shouldn't, you shouldn't feel as a goalie parent that every time you go to practice is just because you're on the team, but you have to go get supplemental, you know, help. It doesn't right. make sense to me. So, you know, again, if you're a pitcher, if you're a catcher, if you're a quarterback, I get it. You're going to get, you're going to get extra fine tuning advice from trainers. But on the day-to-day -day practice, you should get quality reps, the right reps, you know, instruction, feedback, communication. All those kind of things have to be part of what you do. And if you're a head coach and you can go to a clinic like Lee did and say, listen, I'm knowledgeable about all the positions. Am I an expert at this? No, by no means. But I'm knowledgeable about all the positions. Yeah, and I think and that's so important for people to understand. Brian, we should note too, I, I I should have said this at the start. We had people from all over. This was only like a 30 minute drive for me. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. We had people from Florida in the room. We had people from England mm -hmm. in the room. I mean, they they came from everywhere uh for this course, which I mean, the people from Florida, I was shocked. Uh, you know, but that's that's how much it meant to them. And they were really engaged. <laughs> I remember they're like, I'm gonna get my 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 money's worth out of this. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we've historically, I mean, the Atlantic District is one of the only districts that does the in person goaltending clinic or the goaltending coaching, the bronze level course, pretty much anymore. It's a lot of it is like you said earlier in the show is virtual now. It, right. A lot of everything is is uh, online, and um, you know, I, I while I I feel that the virtual aspect has its merits and it, it reaches a wider base, and you're able to touch you know with a lot more coaches in that aspect, and it makes you know, the referee clinics, the, you know, the every year coaching clinics, a lot easier, um, specialized courses and what we call the high performance modules, uh, like goaltending. Uh, I feel like it should be an in-person thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like you get more in-person because you're on the ice, you're running the drills, you're making the drills more complex for the upper level kids. You're simplifying them and boiling them down for the little kids that are just starting out. Um, we've had people, we had a guy last year, come in from the Mayo Clinic. Uh, he works there. He's also a coach out in California. Um, and he, you know, he brought us t-shirts and, it, you know, it was really cool. Uh, we've had, you know, Canadian coaches come down. Um, they, you know, they would happen to be in the United States anyway. So they, on their, their road trip, they, uh, they stopped in, did the course. Um, it really doesn't affect them because they're under Hockey Canada, but they were just looking for another kind of aspect or, you know, seeing the game from another light. Uh, yeah, we, we get a pretty good draw uh, for that course. And it, it's, it's always a lot of fun to see. That's why Alex always asks like uh, who drove the farthest or who flew the farthest to get here. Yeah, today? I was out right away on, I knew that, but here's the thing. I was, I was gladly out. I was like, I didn't want to be traveling three or four hours. Um, I, I do want to just quickly, cause we, we've been teasing it the whole episode. Let's just quickly walk through the, the, the goaltending courses. There's bronze or silver, there's gold. Um, and they, they don't happen every year. Right. But I'm sure there's people listening right now. They're getting interested. So, uh, Brian, could you just walk us through just quickly, you know, the roadmap of, of what these courses entail? Sure. So what we uh, prefer is that you get your level one first, um, then you're, uh, you're in the system. And then when you, what we used to do is we used to take the goaltending course and use that as your certification year and bump you up kind of as your, your module. Uh, but now it's, it's its own separate entity now because it's, it's more like a supplemental kind of like, Hey, we're more complex as a coach now. So you'll get your level one. And then once you get your level one, you complete all your requirements and everything. You can sign up for the high performance goaltending bronze. Uh, that's your initial kind of introduction. That's what we want everybody to take. Mm -hmm. We would love everybody to be a gold level uh, goalie coach, but you know, realistically you start going down the rabbit hole of goaltending as you get to silver and gold. It's more curtailed to very high level coaches. So like college junior professional uh, and then, you know, specialized goalie coaching uh, for silver and gold. So after you're done your bronze and you you do your classroom and you're on ice, you know, you'll get your you'll get your badge. And, uh, you know, there it is. Uh, up, I don't even you have watch, one of those. For those of you listening, I'm holding it up right now. It's, it's a cool little badge. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm jealous of you guys. I, I don't even have one of those badges. Oh, I'll make um, sure you get one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so after your bronze, you'll move up to silver. Silver uh, has been kind of in flux over the last year and a half because we've been retooling uh, mm -hmm. what's going to be included and how often we're going to offer that. And uh, they're kind of offset now. So the silver will not be offered the same year as a gold. 
And once you complete your silver, uh, it, they're, they're a little bit more rare, um, but they're still usually, they, we want them to be like once a year, maybe twice a year. Uh, and we'll offer them East Coast, West Coast, Central, uh, kind of alternating, you know, Boston, Philadelphia, California, or, you know, Los Angeles, Minnesota, Colorado, um, you know, big, big cities where we can get a big draw. Uh, and then your gold course is your, is probably going to be the most rare. It's going to be like every other year, it's going to be offset with the, uh, the level five coaching mm -hmm. symposium. So uh, those will be few and far between. You really kind of got to look for those ones. Um, but if somebody's, you know, really interested, uh, you know, they are more than welcome to uh, contact me um, uh, in that same vein for the, what I promised you guys at your course uh, will be coming out soon. So expect your mailbox to uh, get inundated with some goalie stuff. I finally got the email list off of Alex. He was on vacation. That's right. uh, so I'll be flooding your, you and the other coaches that were there's emails with as bad as much information as I can pack in. No, there. It, listen, it, it's a funny thing for me. Like I said, that when, when my son really chose the position um, as a parent, and again, I always have to be careful as a parent, like you said before, how, how much of a goalie nerd you are. I'm just a hockey nerd. So the way I saw this was like, Oh wow, there's like a whole new thing of hockey. I'm going to get to learn here that I don't know. And I love that. Um, it, to the point I have to make sure that I have to be careful with him of how much, you know, you know what I mean? It's just, I don't want to, I don't want to be like lame for him. I want him to enjoy it, but I, I will give a testament again that, that this bronze level course, a member of your coaching staff, if it can't be, you really should take this. You, you should want somebody on your, your staff that has a clue, uh, of what to do with goaltending, uh, with, within your practices, within your games, within your office. I do want to say too, Mike, you made a great point before. Um, you know, one of the things I've been really impressed with, with my son's organization this year, which I wasn't expecting again, Brian, my son just made the, the jump from Mike to squirt. So there's a little more organization this year. Um, and as a goalie, not only do I feel like he's getting the proper instruction to practice from his coaches, but they've also brought in uh, goaltending nights with professional goalie coaches once a week, really through the end of the year. Uh, and I was blown away by that. And Mike, we, we paid full price, right? But I feel like, wow, we're getting a lot out of this season. Um, just from a positional standpoint as a goalie that they went the extra mile. And I, I like it because I think organizations now are realizing they have to uh, make themselves valuable, right? Or they're not going to get the intake of kids because there's a lot of, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, mostly unfortunately, kids switch organizations all the time. Uh, but, you know, if you create a valuable place for people to land, they're going to want to stay and they're going to want to work. And I, I was impressed by that. I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, by the way, adversely, they're also offering power skating for the, for the, the skaters. Um, but, Brian, when you look at my kid, and, and again, another thing I learned from the course was, you know, I don't necessarily want him in the pads every single day, right? right. Is that, you know, he's going to have really good instruction from a goaltending standpoint. He's going to be skating out, uh, you know, probably 25% of the time during the week. You know, one game right. he skates out, one practice he skates out. And I look at it like, wow, what, what a really well-rounded year this is going to be for him from an educational standpoint. He's going to get the 360 view of the game. All right now he's still nine and ten, so I still have to deal with that aspect of it. <laughs> that's a, that's my that's my charge as a parent, right? But uh, that's what I I'd, I'd like to see more of that, right? Um, that you know, not being in the pads all the time, understanding other aspects of the game. I think it's also important, Brian, that non goalies get in the pads. I think that was uh, something we've talked about on the show. But a big takeaway is until you're in that net, you just don't understand. I don't know how else to say that, right? Would you I, I absolutely that? agree. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that sentiment. And it's great that he's skating out and, and kids really shouldn't be specializing at the goaltending position until late peewees. You know, right. it's in, in my opinion, they should still at some point during the season be skating out if, if possible. And listen, I, I understand the realism of the sport and <laughs> in peewees, that's not going to happen. You're going to have kids that are just like, I want to be the goalie. That's all I want to be. I had a kid at mites. That's all he wanted to do. Right. And dad fought me tooth and nail on it. But, you know, the development model is, you know, you want the kids switching out at the might level. You want them quick changing out of that equipment so everybody gets a chance. And are you going to have kids that are, I don't want to play goaltender at all. I don't ever want to touch that position. Try it once. Nice. You don't like it. You never have to do it again. You know, that's, that's, that, that was always my philosophy with the kids. If you do like it, let's rotate you in and out. Let's, you know, let's see how this goes. And then you start maybe getting into, all right, I'm going to play a little bit more and play a little bit more. But the fact that they're having him skate out, fantastic. That's right. I, I'm not the kind of coach that would say, that kid wants to be a goalie, put him in pads, never take him out. Because, I mean, that's what happened to me. And 
it's a crime to watch me skate out. It's and by terrible. the way, he's not fighting it. Like, like, you know, like, look, this kid's a goalie. He wants to be a goalie, but he wasn't fighting the, oh, I get to go skate out every once in a while because it was kind of presented to him that way. Like, yeah, you want to know everything. So he was yeah. very accepting of it as play, right? Oh, I'll get to do this. And I think that, yeah. that we run into traps sometimes when it's like, yeah, no, you're, you need to be in the net because you're the goalie and you the kids want to play. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to play period. I'm not just talking hockey. So Mike, I, I see you want to say something. I keep talking over you. Sorry. No, 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 I, no. At the very least, you know, if you're going to be a year round, if you're going to be a goaltender, I think that's where as a parent and a coach, you have to get that player out of the net and into another sport and into right. a, a running sport or a, an agility sport or an endurance sport, like something that, that doesn't entail them being in pads. Cause again, again, unfortunately, we don't see the repercussions of that nine-year-old until they're 19 right? and then and 20. And then they're having like all kinds of mobility issues and flex issues. And there's all, you know, strain on different muscle groups. So <clears throat> I'm all for playing uh, players, you know, playing out and Brian, you're absolutely, I mean, listen, I played goalie and player until Bantam. And because nobody else wanted to play goalie, I'm like, God, I love playing goalie. This is great. Like, I think, I just, you know, I was like, good. No, but I said, I don't know. I like it. You know, and, and I, I was, I was like, somebody depended on me to be in the net, right? Because they didn't have anybody. But I think more importantly, it just gave, you know, I, I don't like today's game. And you just talked about, you know, when the new pads come out, right? The, the game's not allowing us to have a peewee kid say, hey, I'm going to get two sets of equipment and I'm going to play out and play in and another kid's going to play goalie. Like, it, it, so at the at the at the six seven eight nine year old, I mean, I've done a junior ranger in the NHL program now for the last five or six years, and the quick change gear. I mean, we had uh, sixteen different kids playing net. Now, out of those sixteen kids during the year, six took to it. Like they're like, oh my god, like I never want to, I never want to play anything else. Like I love this, and that's great, you know. And I think that's where we want to be. But you know, I think if you can't get a player to play you know out as a as a skater then at least help them become you know getting something different athletically because i think the 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 benefits of it are great obviously we know that right tennis and golf and soccer and lacrosse we know that that's that's like if you just don't see that as plain as it is you probably shouldn't be coaching youth sports like if you don't actually see that a multi-sport kid is just a better kid at the end of the journey then you're just you're just I don't know. You're it just it, 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 you're, you shouldn't be coaching kids. But <laughs> if you're a parent that says my kid's a goalie, he loves goalie. That's great. You need to kind of you know we we say it all the time, Lee. Right when we're talking, everybody. My kid loves chocolate, but he can't have a chocolate cake every night. Like right, at some right. point, you can be like, no, chocolate cakes for Friday night or your son. What like you can't just and there's other types of cake. Yeah, yeah, and there's other yeah. And it's just like, you know, just, yeah. At some at some point, you have to be like, listen. We want a healthy balance for our players. And it sounds like, you know, Brian, I think what the coaching education program has done too is just say, listen, we're USA hockey and we're telling you not to play hockey. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like it's like other sports, are like, no, you must do this, 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 and this. And USA hockey has set the standard. I mean, there's no, there's not even a, a question about it that they've set the standard of saying, no, 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 we actually are promoting lacrosse. We're promoting baseball we want you to play tennis now is it a detriment to you know rink owners and program directors and maybe but the but i want a long-term kid to be playing the sport down the road the only way i'm going to do that is to allow balance in the way we teach and i think that if, if nothing else the bronze program does for non goal well and goalies right is to say this is how it, this is how you become a balanced player and if you could do these other things outside of the net and work on proprioception and work on balance and work on agility and work on, you know, using both arms and using your brain, like all that kind of stuff, yeah. um, you know, helps you down the road. And, and ultimately, is not the goal. Like if you ask these parents, like, like, well, what's what's the goal? Well, my goal is I want my kid to be the I want him to be in the NHL. I want him to be the best goalie in the world. Mm -hmm. OK, well, if that's really what your goal is, then you then you would follow this path, not that path. So right. I think if anything, if nothing else. The educational piece is allowing people to see it and hear the data. Now it's up to, you know, you've, you've alluded to it, right? It's up to the coaches that claim they're, they're pros to, uh, you know, to actually follow those guidelines. I'm a huge proponent of, of hockey players moving away from hockey in the off season. Listen, camps in summertime are always going to be there. My kid, my son Brody participated in, I think three different camps this summer you know, four or five days on the ice, but like 
historically we've always tried to get them out, you know, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, you know, whatever sport we can get them away from the rink so that he's not burnt out so that when you, cause that was my biggest thing as a kid, I would leave hockey because there wasn't this year round hockey thing. When I was a kid, it was like, you got done playoffs in like February and March and you had a little bit of tryouts and then it was barren. There was like the rink shut down, they melted down and it was, you know, I might've played street hockey with my friends, but I was on the baseball diamond. You know, I, I was playing basketball. I was playing soccer, you know, and, and that left me hungry so that when pre-camp started, you know, and I see it in my son too, when we take him away from hockey, he gets back into it and it's like, it's almost like the flywheel lets loose and he's he's ready to go again. Well, that's so, that's know? what's so ironic about about high performing athletes that have come through, right? Like guys like you and Lee. And the ironic thing is everything that got them to be a high performer is what you are not doing with your kid. Like I look at these guys go, you are you are you every every athlete will say that. Oh, I played baseball, I played lacrosse, I did this. My I never played hockey in the in the summer. My and then but then all of us go. Yeah, but oh my God, like my kid's going to miss out like everybody else's kid is doing it. I'm like, no, 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 that's the reason you're a high performer. That's the reason you got through the gauntlet of this, 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 you know, constant battle of trying to find, you know, can you be a great player and, and, but, and, and then maintain passion. And I think that's where we can do such a great job is, is to manufacture that passion by taking it away. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. you know, just remembering, like, like, it's just why it's why people, you know, go crazy on Netflix. Right. You, if you, if you, if you sit there and go, oh my God, every Wednesday night is my favorite show. And they're like dying. Cause you take it away from them and they can't watch it. If you showed, if you just showed the shows every night, they're like, Oh, I could just, I, I, I don't need to wait. You know, I think that's the, that's the, that's that piece that, that drive for these kids like no no you know what i'm going to hold this back a little bit i'm going to have you wait a little bit and then we'll start seeing if, if well, this it, is something it's really not wanted. just for the kids my you know brian you'll laugh at this we did an episode at the end of the season about like should my kid play spring hockey basically and and i was the test subject and and you know we we came to the decision that <clears throat> we're going to take a break in the spring um and i think not only was that really good for my kids but it was really good for me and my wife like you know because you, you, yes. when you're in it when you're in it every week every week you know you kind of get in that routine until you break it you don't realize like man wow i really needed i really needed a break right? <laughs> you go holy crap yeah, my yeah. lawn i can actually do my lawn this spring oh, i mean it was so know, much this yeah, I, 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 you know that wasn't i mean i can go through the list of things i got to do but it's just like wow and then you know summer summer's a little looser right we do like a summer league there's no practices just games and um actually my son said he's in a goaltending camp now for the first time this summer he's doing in proper instruction with goaltending and we're in mid-august um, so I think that that's, that's really, really important. You yeah. Know? And, and, and if you've ever listened to us before, right. And this is the first time listening, I'm not against, listen, I'm not against spring and summer hockey. I'm, I'm not even Me against camps yeah. and clinics. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's a, there's a much better, uh, what I'm against is on a Thursday in the summer, you get in a car and you travel seven hours and play 16 games on a weekend and come home right. Sunday night and say, wow, that was a success. I'm like, for, of what? Like, what, what was that a yeah, success okay. of? So again, if you do it once, that's great. But what I see what we're, we're, we're going, and this is, listen, I see it in baseball. I see it in there. It's like every weekend of every day of, you know, of every, of every season, you're, you're in this constant flux of, of, you know, youth sports. And, and at the end of the day, the, 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 the players we see succeeding are succeeding anyway. Well, and then what we, what we don't see is the carnage that we're leaving. And yeah. I think that's where it's great that the, 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 the program that you're involved in, Brian, and educating not only the technical aspects of goaltending, but the discussion about what equipment to wear. What do you really need? Do you need like, you know, do you need this high level stuff or can you get away with this? Can you get away with equipment that's, you know, can you use hand-me-down equipment? Is there anything wrong with, you know, using different types of pads or, you know, do, do you need the top level of this when your kid is this? Like it's all, that's all that piece of education. It allows, you know, I would say the sane parent, like the parent that just wants their kid to enjoy sport, an opportunity to enjoy it. And again, the kids that will excel will excel. I, I just listen. I just I, I'm a firm believer that if you're if you're going to be that player, you're going to be that player. But, and Mike, you know, I want to add this, and Brian, I, want, I I do want to throw it to you, but I this is the that's just the truth of any high level athlete, maybe collegiate to pro. I don't care what position they play, they will kick your ass at any sport you want to play them against because they are athletes. They are great athletes. Right. They're right. not just great hockey players. They specialize in hockey, but there's not one NHL player. 
that's not an amazing athlete. And you cannot create an amazing, well-rounded athlete if your kid only plays one position or one sport. It's just, it's just not possible. Sorry, Brian, I just had to say that. Go ahead. I know. I, I absolutely agree with you. It's, that's, that's a great point. I have played hockey with, I have played sports with those kind of athletes where no matter what you do, my best friend who never played anything more than high school soccer, all right, he's the best all-around athlete I've ever met in my life and the most competitive. Like, he's the kind of guy where he goes, how many points do we need to win? Like that's his famous line. And then that's it. Game over. Like you're like, doesn't matter what it is. Soccer, baseball, cornhole, hockey. Like Poker. he was the top <laughs> guy. Yeah. On every sport we ever played, even now as, as adults, like as grown men, like he's the guy that everybody tries to beat, but can't, you know, and he was just, he was one of those kind of athletes. Now his, his drive was to just get a job and, you know, start making money out of high school. So he stopped playing sports, but like, you know, that's, that's my best, like me personally, that's my best example. But like my son is a better athlete than I ever was. He's, you know, it just, he's better competitively mentally. He's better, you know, and he's athletically gifted. I had to battle for every level that I gained in that sport in baseball in hockey. You know, I was always the guy that outworked everybody. That's the only reason I made it in minor leagues. That's the only reason I made it onto a junior team. You know, college was a kind of foregone conclusion because they always need goalies. But, you know, I excelled because I outworked other guys. Like when I was bouncing around the federal league, it was when I came to the team, they knew that the starting goalie was either screwing up or on his way out the door because I was going to either push him to get back into shape or I was going to take his job. Right. But my son, on the other hand, and other athletes like him, they're just gifted they're 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 good at whatever they do like he started lacrosse a couple years ago and instantly took to it and there was an instant passion where he's staying an hour after practice is over and shooting you know on a dark field and all i have is the headlights on he's just like dad can i stay and shoot around yeah sure no problem you know when he was with baseball he wanted to go to the diamond and field you know as a kid like a little guy t-ball they would put him at the pitcher's position because they knew he would dive in front of the ball so it would never get to the infield and he would just throw the kids out at first. Like he wasn't afraid to throw himself in front of the ball. You can't teach that kind of athleticism. That's just inherent to the kid, you know, or to the athlete. You can only kind of cultivate that and mold it and encourage it, but you can't burn it out. Right. And that's one thing I was always afraid of when my kids started playing sports. And with any athlete that I coach, I don't want to see them burn out. If a kid has a true passion for the game, they're going to want to be there no matter what. But you also have to kind of almost counsel the parents like you can't be at the rink 24 hours a day, seven days a week because the kid's never going to last. You know, I always use the adage that like there are NHL players that make it to the NHL that didn't start playing hockey till freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. If your kids in a, if your kid from the age of six years old until they're 17 is in the is in the rink 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They're not going to make it. And if they do, they're part of a fraction of a percentage of human beings that were able to stick that out. But like to Mike's point, you start seeing the detrimental effects of that kind of specialization and overwork from doing that. You, you have to give the body a rest. Like there are, I, like in the summer, I pull my kid away from sports at different times during the summer, but for weeks at a time. I don't want him to do anything other than just chill out hang out with his friends, play video games and just rest because the season is such a grind. Right. And the training, he's on the ice two days a week and then two or three times every weekend. And God forbid he plays for his travel team and a high school team. Now, you know, he's on the ice that much more, you know, and, and if he wants to do it, I will let him do it. And he finishes the commitments that he, he starts. Sometimes we've gotten to the point where we're like, all right, we don't want to do this anymore. Because we started it and then it became not fun. So we're going to finish it out and then not go back. Right. You know, we did it with soccer. The key there you said is finish it out. Uh, I, I always like to point on that because if you make a commitment, as you just said, you finish. You don't quit midseason on your team, barring nothing, you know, serious is going on. Right. 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 You, you finish what you started and then the next season you make that decision. I think that that's a really valuable lesson for everybody in every, every position in every sport. I don't think it's limited to hockey. No, and Brian, I like you know, in your in your point of you know that you're in hindsight, right? You're looking at it from the view of like I just have all the statistics in front of me. Like it's gonna be very difficult for your kid not to burn out when you're six and seven, eight years old, 
and you're at the rink every morning at 5 a.m. and you're dragging them there and they they love it, right? My kid loves it. Yeah, I, I, I get it, you know, and I see that all the time. But I think, and, and the problem is all our all of us as parents, that 1%, that 1%. I think our kid's the 1%. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like everybody's kid is that kid. And said, oh, no, no, I get it. Like those parents over there, they probably shouldn't be doing this. This is way too much for their kid. Like don't, that kid's going to burn out. Well, what about your kid? He's here at the same, like, like when I, la- I laugh when I walk into the rink and somebody's like, Jesus, I see you all the time. I go, yeah, I know, but I'm working. <laughs> like, like you're, 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 yeah. here, you're here getting lessons every day. Like I'm here with a different kid every day. You're here every day with your kid. And, and I, and I, and I've, I actually, I've kind of taken a, I, I want to say a, a, a muted tone to that parent. Cause I almost feel just bad. Like, I'm just like, well, I, no, I get it. You think that your kid's going to be the, the next kid that's going to make, make it. That's fine. I mean, I, that, there's nothing you can do to combat that, but the, 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 the statistics and, and, and history is not on your side. And a matter of fact, you know, I think most of us would know that even, it, you know, even if you, if you took the kids out, they're still going to succeed. They're still going to be the best player. And just to have that balance in life and, and Lee, we, right. We talk on, on all the different podcast episodes that we have. We talked to so many professional athletes that had such a horrible youth mm-hmm. experience right. and, and, and just fell up. And, he, and, and people like, yeah, I know, but he made it to the NHL. Like I know his yeah, dad was a, a tyrant and I know he skated every day and I know cost, his parents yeah. made him shoot 500 pucks a day. I don't, you know, I don't care because they, he made it. I go, well, I don't know. Talk to those athletes. See if they made Well, I, how about this? Those athletes are spending a majority of their time now trying to make sure that doesn't happen to other kids. I mean, that should tell you something right there about how traumatized that they, they were. <laughs> right, 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 right. There's yeah, so many yeah, different yeah. paths, but I think the biggest yeah. thing is just saying, you know, a well-rounded kid is a better kid for any coach, any college, any junior program. You know, a player, again, unless you can score 90 goals, you, don't, you know, like, you know, you don't need to be well-rounded. If you're going to score 90 goals, I don't care if you're an, an ass, <laughs> you know, just keep, just keep scoring goals for us. But I think at the end, but at the end of the day, people, you know, parents have to see that the more I can do for my kid to be a well-rounded individual and mentally tough and gritty and, and have an opportunity to, you know, be a great teammate that that is going to, you know, propel that person more later right. on when it really matters than, then, then this like you're, you're coaching a person here. Like I, again, I keep reiterating this on the show. We're not just making hockey players as coaches. You're making people, and the better you can make a person, most likely they're going to become a better player as well. You know, and and Mike, you're bringing up a lot of good points. Look, a lot of people listen to this show. A lot of people, and we thank all of you, by the way. But Mike, the parent you're talking about who thinks their kid's making the 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 chell. Uh, probably isn't listening. And, you know, th- th- you know, that is what it is. But I-, I think this, I think a majority of parents out there are pretty good parents. Um, and I think that's the reason the show's had success is because we just kind of gave a voice to, to people that like, you know, we get that 10% crazy parent stuff on our news feeds, people hitting refs on the head and running on the ice. Truth is most hockey parents aren't like that. You know, they want to know what's best. And yeah, no, no, 95% of the great parents. And that's why you do yeah. this every day, right, Brian? I mean, you're, you're dealing right. with, you're dealing with how many goalies every year that you personally mentor right and you're like okay well out of out of 100 of the kids i work with 96 of, them, uh, of the parents are great it's that it's 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 the it's the it's those couple that drive us <laughs> yeah. all crazy and and drive you to monday morning podcasting really <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is therapy brian i, I want to ask this question too I, I i get a just a couple and we'll let you get to bed for those of you listening but brian did a full night shift before doing this episode but uh, I, I always like to talk about the mental side of the game. Uh, and I know that uh, mentality and, and mental strength, uh, mental fitness coaching has become part of hockey as a whole, but specifically goaltenders uh, really need this. Um, it is a high stress position all the time, no matter when you start it. So I'm just curious on your thoughts about, you know, how we can better incorporate mental fitness training for goaltenders, how important it is and, and what we're, we need to do now as coaches to make sure that's part of our regime. I, so um, it, it's the mental side of the game, thank God, has had so much light shed on it uh, in the last uh, 15 years. There's there's a I think there's like a 550 percent uptick in, in how much how many uh, programs are now incorporating that on their both their coaches uh, centering in on that or some of the higher level uh, teams bringing in uh, mental mental coaches. Uh, whether it's you know having a therapist there or just a sports uh, se- a sports centric men- uh, you know uh, to help with the mental side of the game, in goaltending, 
I wish I could say it was just a robotic equation and it's just, uh, you know, leave the goal behind and start anew. Cause like, that's one of the, so, so I, I will, I will admittedly throw myself on the, uh, on, on the, the cross and say, I was that lunatic parent when my kid first started playing goaltender because I had no idea how to do that. I didn't know that you weren't supposed to yell. And I didn't know that you weren't supposed to scream at your kid because you have a higher knowledge of the game and they should know because you've been talking to and they've been exposed to it their entire life. That's not how it works. Goaltending is extremely individual. You're going to have some kids that work so hard at the mental side of the game. And I mean, like the, one of the greatest comparisons I ever saw to the mental side of the game was Mike Richter versus Marty, Marty Brodeur. And Mike Richter was very concentrated and very serious and he didn't want to talk to anybody during games or before games. And he, he was, he was kind of a lunatic in practices and, and pregame, he, like he didn't want to deal with anybody. He didn't want to talk to nobody. Whereas Marty Brodeur is doing interviews and he's laughing and he's very jovial and, and very relaxed and calm. And, you know, you just see that, that dichotomy between like goaltenders, you're going to have some kids that just, the mental side of the game comes very easy to them. Letting gold, you know, having goldfish moments is what I call it. You know, Ted Lasso kind of pioneered that, you know, he made it very popular, but I was, I, I kind of used that analogy early on when I started coaching saying, you got to be like a goldfish, man. You got to have a goldfish memory. It's only 10 seconds. You know, you let up a goal. Goalies need a reset program when they let up a goal. It doesn't have to be a long drawn out like ritual where, you know, they're, they're grabbing a voodoo doll and, and all this other, you know, Stuff. It can be as simple as <laughs> Carter Hart. Carter Hart's reset when he lets up a goal or a play doesn't go very well is he grabs his water bottle, him and, and Braden Holpe. They grab their water bottle, they throw water, they shoot water up in the air, they catch one droplet with their eye, and they watch it all the way to the ice. And that's as long as they have to worry about it. And as soon as it hits the ice, that thought is gone. That goal didn't happen. It's behind them. Uh, I, My son, you know, he developed his own. It's kind of like he gets up. He gets into position, he gets set, he kind of jiggles his feet a little bit, and he smacks his stick down onto the ice in a ready position. And that's when I know his mind's clear. You know, I told him, it's not my reset, it's yours. Mm. You have to come up with your own kind of mental side of the game. Pre, pre-game pre prep is huge. Having a system, you, every, you'll every you see every NHL player, every AHL player, every high-level athlete has their own kind of ritual pre-game that gets their – because as a goaltender – you can't go in frazzled. You can't go in with your your mind going a million miles a minute, and that's not that's not to downplay the the uh, the advantage some kids have with ADHD, where they can pay attention to everything on the ice at once, versus honing in and focusing on one spot. Uh, that's it's just if your brain's somewhere else, you're not going to perform well. Uh, if, if there's something going on at home that y- your grades aren't going where they should be, uh, you know, you're fighting with your brother or sister or you know, there's, there's some other things going on or maybe you just, you're, you and your goalie partner aren't getting along. You're not in sync or your personalities clash or you're fighting with somebody on the team or the coach has been really beating on you in practice. Like, like, you know, really hammering you. It doesn't make for solid goaltending foundation because that's where everything starts is the mental side of the game. When you wake up in the morning, you really, you got to work hard to get yourself out of a funk. If you wake up ready to go, you're ready to go. And, and, you know, if you can keep that, that train going on the same track, you're going to be successful on the ice. It's, it's when you start derailing and going, you know, off on tangents because this was distracting or this didn't go right. Or, you know, there's, there's, there's been goalies that have had wild, you know, I mean, my partner, when I played in Danbury, like he had to have a cup of black coffee before the game at, at lunch and, like he had to eat a half a bowl of pasta and then he had to put his stuff on left to right. And it didn't happen that way. You never saw a melt. Like I I've seen meltdowns like, wow. Um, but <laughs> being able to have that mental toughness where like you come in, it's halfway through the season. Okay. I'm going to walk in an hour early. I'm going to get my hand eye coordination going. I'm going to go out and warm up with my team. I'm going to come back in and maybe there, maybe the kid, talks maybe he jokes around gets himself dressed gets himself ready boom he's ready to go for the game he's nice and relaxed he's moving around there's other kids i don't want to talk to nobody i got my headphones on i'm getting concentrated i'm going to get my gear on and when the coach comes in to talk to us i pull them off i'm ready to go for the game you know what i mean it's it's 
you know, it doesn't always have to be that, you know, that psychotic, like mm. we got to punch Jerry in the jock strap before the game because that worked <laughs> and he got a shutout out two weeks ago because of it. You know, it's, it, it's so important. And not just with goaltending with all aspects of the game. Now forwards, defensemen, they, they all have different, uh, you know, aspects of that, that mental game where these coaches are coming in and, you know, they're, they're trying to help them break through slumps they're trying to keep them on hot streaks. You know, they're, 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 it's leaps and bounds what it was year, you know, years ago when I was playing and it, it's, it's only benefiting the players now. Um, and coaches kind of dipping their toes into that so that they can keep their kids on that, that right track, that mainline track towards, you know, winning and developing and becoming better hockey players and more well rounded athletes. And student athletes is my most important trigger word is because they are student athletes. That that's that's one small piece to being a great coach and helping these kids develop in a major way that's going to benefit them for the rest of their life, because those well-rounded athletes go on to be well-rounded co-workers and well-rounded bosses and, you know, just as as people. So I, I just I kind of got I, I kind of got off on a tangent there because it's like I'm trying no, to great touch on how it's how me the mental side of the game is developed and it's it's grown so in a good way. Uh, for hockey and other sports, um, you know, but for goaltending, it's, it's, it's just, you have to have your own system. It can't be cookie cutter from somebody else. If the kid likes the thing that Braden Holpe and, and Carter Hart does, or, you know, uh, uh, if you, from an older generation of getting to back off pregame rituals or, you know, Mark Andre Fleury, just kind of fooling around, um, you know, I could go off, I could go on forever. Uh, but, you know, they have to develop their own, their, their own system to keep their mental health in the game in a good place. Uh, you know, it, it can't be somebody else's. The parents can't tell them what to do. Um, you know, the coaches can't, you know, beat it into them. It's, it's kind of, you have to help them cultivate their own little mental fortress that keeps them pretty much sane in, in, in the, in the crazy grind of that hockey season. It's a great point. I, I think also, you know, you, you're alluding to it. You can't get inside someone else's head, even if it's your own son or daughter. Like they, they, they are in their head. They have to figure this out. You can give them tools or Brian, something I remember you saying from the course, uh, not just with mental stuff, but also just the, 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 the physical movement of a goaltender. You, you can borrow from a goalie, but if a goalie, you know, and again, we can create this mentally in a second, if a goalie six, five and you're five, nine, you know, you borrow what you need, but you're not six, five, you, you have to find a style that works for you. Um, and I, I think you can take that metaphor beyond just hockey, right? Like, you're in your body, you're in your mind. You got to find what works for you. So borrow what you can learn uh, and make your own path with it. I mean, that was a big takeaway for me from that course as well. I, I didn't say that earlier. It was just that there's no one way to play goalie. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no three ways to play goalie. There's 6 million ways to play goalie. Uh, and we each mm -hmm. have to kind of figure that out on our own and, and then, and then evolve over time. Yeah. Uh, I told you in the, in the course that, when I tell kids to pick a goalie that they like, it's not that I want them to emulate them carbon copy. It's right. I want you to pick things that you like about their game and we can work on why that would strengthen your game and why you can't do that. Because, and I said this in the course, <laughs> every single NHL goaltender is a freak of nature. There are some that are more, there are some that are a little bit closer to us normal human beings and mortals, but like guys like Jonathan quick, I tell my kids all the time, you cannot be him. You cannot be Jonathan Quick. You cannot be Ben Bishop. You can't teach size. You can't teach that kind of flexibility. You can get flexible, but Jonathan Quick's body is built in such a way, and he has no hip impingement whatsoever. But again, the long-term effects of him playing that style were detrimental to his career towards the end. He's he's had hip surgeries, and it's 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 hurting him in the long run. You know, he's not as fast as you used to be into that split just because, but when I watch these kids try and do that straddle split as a part of their game and like, they make that same, like, what now you're done. You're, you're, you're there. You have nothing left. You've sold your best save. That should be on, that should be like a one, one timer save or a breakaway save. You've now spent that save on a rudimentary shot that you kicked out to the slot and they're going to bury over top of you. <laughs> so yes, to your point, take what you can, and learn that you can't mimic certain things about those goalies. You know, Ben Bishop's six foot seven on skates, or yeah, you know, yeah. however tall you, that monstrous human yeah. being, can't teach that. That's that's an inherent gift 
of genetics that he uses to his advantage. Can't you can't make a kid that big. They can you can see a small kid play that big. It appears to play that big because he uses his angles, his depth, and everything correctly. But that that inside on the goal line being that big, that's a gift, you know, that Ben Bishop uses. That that's not gonna happen for a kid that's five five. Right. You know, so that's that's an absolute I, I'm I'm so glad you took that away from the course because I try and teach I try oh, and teach I took so much. Uh, look, yeah, another thing. I, I believe it was you. Were you the one who told me about the hands awake thing? Was that you? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so Active for those hands. of you listening, yeah, now, not back here, right? Unless so, you're in tight. So my, my uh, it, like most young goaltenders, my son was kind of resting his glove on his, his leg a little bit. And look, 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 again, just to show you how impactful this was, one you had mentioned that's a normal place for your hands to be. It's a comfortable place for your hands to be. And then you know, he Brian instructed us like. I was telling my son, like, no, you want to have your glove up. And like, you know, I was telling him the right thing, but it wasn't, it wasn't computing. And so I had to find a different way to say it. And you, you said hands awake or hands active. I started telling him that. And it's funny, Brian, in the game, for those of you watching again, he's just hit to go right up. Like that totally worked for him. Right. So this is also why we need to share information. This is also why we need to take these courses and teach these courses and find different things that work for each other. We all have a kid at some, at one point, that's just not going to, it doesn't, you said this before, it doesn't matter how much, you know, they're not going to listen to you because your dad or your mom. And that's just the way it is sometimes. My kid. Yeah. That's my kid. <laughs> right. I can't coach my kid because right. he thinks that I yell because I'm loud. I'm your a dad. loud coach. Your I'm dad. Dangerous, <laughs> but I'm dad. And, right. and unless there's other kids out there to where he feels like he's in the mix, I right. can't do one-on-one -on -one with him because he right. thinks I'm yelling at him. So what I do is I tell other coaches – this is what you need to do. And then they go do <laughs> it. And I do. focus on somebody else that's on the ice. We tag team our kids at practice a lot, but uh, I, I'll tell you, we all go through that. I go through that. Uh, in fact, it's, it is so hard. All of you listening know that it's so hard when you're knowledgeable to not try and help because you, they can't comprehend how much you love them and that you want to help them yet. They will one day, hopefully. Um, Brian, I, I wanted to ask this, this last question here, Mike, if you have another one, please, please jump in at the end here. Um, but I saw this in your bio that you're the president of the Camden County Warriors, uh, which is a charitable hockey team of first responders. Uh, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that group a little bit. Uh, at minimum, just to get you a clip you can share with the guys and say, you see, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job on the podcast. <laughs> no, but tell us a little bit of that, that, that organization. So uh, I've been a firefighter and an EMT uh, since 2006, um, and I'm full-time uh, EMT, and I'm a volunteer in my town. Um, and I was contacted by a Delaware Port Authority cop that heard I was a goalie, and he's like, hey, man, you're, 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 a, you're a firefighter, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, man, I'm, I'm trying to put this team together. This is back in 2013. And, uh, you know, we got an initial group of guys together and, and we were just playing Friday afternoon games against other public safety teams, state police, um, you know, Atlantic City uh, police and fire had a team um, just whenever we could get against, you know, jump. And then it it started to build. It, it was like, hey, why don't we try and raise money? You know, you know, this person got hurt or unfortunately, you know, he had a line of duty death. Um, let's try and raise some money for the family. Uh, and then it, it it's over the last 10 years, it's grown. Uh, we went during COVID, we established a, a board and we hit all re our requirements to become a, an actual 501c3 charitable organization. Um, we do fundraisers with the state police every year. We go to um, the uh, Heroes Cup up in Massachusetts uh, and compete against uh, other police and fire teams uh, first responders, military from all over North America. Um, and, you know, I, the, fir our first iteration of the board, I was elected president. I was reelected. Uh, I since step stepped down and my vice president took over, um, still involved. Uh, the guys are doing fantastic work, uh, in the community. Uh, we're raising funds for, uh, fallen first responder funds. Um, you know, we have a, we actually have a, uh, charity tournament this weekend called checking for charity. Uh, in Voorhees at the Flyers Training Center that we compete in every year. We don't always do as well because the competition in that tournament is really high. They actually have a pro-am division uh, mm -hmm. in this tournament that we get some NHL players in. Uh, but it's the winning the hockey games is not the focus. It's raising money for the organizations that we try and benefit uh, for that. And it's been an, a, an amazing um, experience with these guys and their family to me. These guys are there. And, you know, we use that term a lot, brothers and sisters in the, in the first responder community. 
Uh, but they really are. They, they, they've gotten me through tough times. Um, you know, we've been there for each other uh, and it, it's a great support group to have uh, in, in our line of work is to have that outlet and, and play, you know, this great game with other people that understand what you go through day in and day out at work and, uh, and be able to help other people. And it's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for me um, to be, you know, not only just the, the, you know, the president of the organization when we first founded the 501c3 and been there since the very beginning of the team, uh, but just to see how much we've grown. We went from, I think, like 22 people to we're like on, we're, we're, we're getting close to 75, almost 100 members. Wow. Um, we're actually splitting teams up to talent level. We have our like our A division, which is our guys that all played like either minor leagues or juniors or whatever. And we go and play against the FDNY, the NYPD, Boston Fire, the the um, the FBI teams, uh, you know, like and, and we try and always couple it with some kind of charitable donation. So, yeah, we have a, a game coming up in October uh, that, that benefits the uh, McCausland Fund. He's a. Uh, um, uh, a uh, firefighter, or firefighter, and a police officer in the area, and uh, we lost uh, McCausland a couple of years ago, and his family started this fund for victims of uh, line of duty suicide, uh, and we just, you know, we want to raise as much money for as many people as we can help, and you know, sometimes we spread ourselves too thin, but we don't really mind. We 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 like doing good for the, you know. It's what we do. We want to help people. It's why we got into this line of work and we, we all love it. And it's, it's even more fun when you do it with friends. And that's exactly what these guys have become to me. They're all friends in my, they're, they're, they're my family. You know, my kid knows all of them. You know, he's little Santora and uh, you know, he sometimes jumps out there in net when we play, you know, um, games just to, during warmups to kind of like be in with the guys. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a great organization. And, and um, I, I, can't wait to see what the future holds. 10 years is we've brought a lot of change and we've done a lot of good for a lot of people. And I, I hope, I hope that we get to keep doing that. It just shows you everybody listening to him, Brian, I applaud you on all your work with that and everybody involved that, that the hockey community goes well beyond just youth sports. Right. And that the, the, we talk a lot about the ROI of youth hockey on this show. Um, and that it's not making a collegiate division one team. It's the type of person that you become. And you're an upstanding person here. Not not just your work in the game, your work outside the game and uh, what you do with first responders. So uh, j- thank you for that, just as a, as a parent and as a citizen, all the work that you do. Yeah, I, I, it's, I love this game. I fell in love with this game as a little kid and I've, participated in pretty much every aspect that you can participate in in this game and i love it uh, there's no point there are times where i get tired there's times <laughs> where i kind of get burnt out and worn out and but when i step away for even a couple days i find myself right back into it i'm watching videos i'm at the rink watching other people play you know i'm checking in on students that i have hey how's your summer going you know i'm coaching on tournament teams you know and i'm helping usa hockey and If I can create better players, and when I say better players, I mean better people Mm -hmm. from this game, and I can show them how great this game can be and how much you can fall in love with it, then I'm doing my part to return what I've gotten from this game. I've gotten so much from this game. I could never repay the sport enough, but I've I've done my part to try. (laughs) And, you know, whether it's officiating games or participating with sled hockey or special needs hockey or you know, first responder, uh, military vets, you know, whatever I can do to give time back, uh, you know, this, it's given me so much and I can never repay the sport for what I've gotten from it. So if I, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing it. And like I've told people before, you know, when the day comes that I can't carry my bag in, I won't play anymore, but I won't leave the sport. Um, Brian, let me tell you something, man, you're doing it. And and again, I, I, I'm a big believer. You guys send the elevator back down and you're sending it down for a lot of people. And, and uh, that's, that's, really at the end of the day, what makes the game so great, right? It's always the people you do it with. And I, I understand the sentiments of that. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on. I got that feeling from you from the second you started speaking. <laughs> we were at that course. So Mike, do you have anything else? I didn't want to, I didn't want to not touch on you one more time. No, no, we're good. I mean, it's a great conversation. I think, you know, having the opportunity to hear more about the coaching program and the goalie side of it, and just, you know, hearing different perspectives from a player, you know, ex-player, 
current player actually right and uh you know a father a, a coach a, a, a developer I with think a it's a sick crazy. handlebar mustache by the way for those of you listening <laughs> i do want to bring some light to that yeah, awesome yeah. yeah so and again obviously usahockey.com if you're interested in learning more about these goaltending courses uh, if you're a coach you find them in the same place you find all of the courses uh I, i'm saying as someone who took it highly highly recommend it all right if you're a coach and you're serious about being a coach whether you are a dad or a mom stepping into the game for the first time because your kid's doing it, or you're a top-level coach, I highly recommend you get involved in this program because you have great instructors like Brian Santora and his uh, his friends that were there as well. So, Brian, thanks so much for being here today. This was a fantastic episode. Thank you very much for having me. It's been awesome talking to you guys. And let everybody, you are welcome to our courses. You are welcome to the Bronze Level courses. I, inv I invite everybody to come out and geek out with me at this at this course because i, I you can you can attest to this lee i you know, i ran off a couple times it's just me <laughs> i enjoyed those times <laughs> i had fun uh, when you were running it's, off. yeah it's my favorite thing so if anybody parents coaches uh, take the course it's it's not going to do anything but benefit you yeah totally agree so that's going to do it for this edition of our kids play goalie uh, if you want to hear more of the goaltending episodes obviously go to our kids play there's a little search bar you can search for them but if you just search our kids play goalie on any podcasting network you'll find all of the episodes uh for brian santora mike benelli i'm lee elias yeah you've listened to our kids play goalie we'll see you in the next episode have a great week everybody we hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.